What is going on, everybody? Today, we're going to talk about the Chicago Bears offensive line against the Buffalo Bills. And we're going to look at pretty much every single one of the 20 snaps that the starting unit was out there. We're going to talk about what these guys showed and why I think this unit is absolutely incredible. Darnell Wright had so many really, really good snaps. Braxton Jones looked a lot quicker, a lot more explosive. We're going to get into that as well. And then Tevin Jenkins is all pro. Tevin Jenkins, the guy's a phenomenal football player. Let's go ahead and get right into this video. We're actually going to start with a negative play. The first play we're going to look at is this play right here. Darnell Wright actually ends up getting called for a hold. Uh, he's going up against Greg Rizal. Some people think Rizal is a top 10 to 15 pass rusher. And Darnell Wright does a pretty good job being able to stop him, but he obviously doesn't let go and he gets called for the hold. Uh, some people I saw posting and talking about this play saying it was not a hold. Uh, I'm about 50-50. I do understand how you can think this is not a hold because technically... Darnell Wright does have his hands to the inside, and Rizal is trying to pull away, but really, Darnell Wright's kind of driving him into the ground, right? He's driving him into the ground, and to me, I can definitely see how that is not necessarily a hold, but it gets called, so it's a hold however you want to look at it. I do also want to point out one other thing on this play. Look at Darnell Wright here, man, just doing those advanced things as he gets out of his set. Look at him fake the punch to Greg Rizal. Look at him put those, those hands out there, and look at the defensive end essentially react to that. I love that, man. To me, that's absolutely special right there. And uh, it's not a terrible rep. Obviously, the quarterback does try to get out of the pocket. I think if the quarterback throws this pass, you're going to write this off as a win for Darnell Wright. So it's a pretty good job right there on the other end. Uh, you're going to get a, a pancake block over here. Tevin Jenkins is going to release the, the defensive tackle. He's going to get out here to Braxton Jones. And he's going to make sure number 57 feels that one. It's a pretty good job. Let's go ahead and get to the next snap. So now you got second and 17. You're going to get a draw play on this one, and the running back's going to pick up about six yards. Let's just go ahead and get into the next play, which is third and 12, because you see how much time the offensive line is going to essentially give to Caleb Williams on this one. Third and 12, you're going to pick the first down up. To me, this is a phenomenal job by the guys up front. This is exactly what you need when you have a rookie quarterback. And Caleb Williams, to me, looks like the real deal. I mean, the guy's an absolute star. You can just see it, the way he reads, the way he goes through his progressions. Williams is going to be an absolute stud. I'm very excited to kind of watch his development. And we will be covering the Bears, as you guys know, as we've always kind of covered the Bears over the past couple of seasons. But let's look at these plays a little bit. Braxton Jones over here is going to be going up against the starting defensive end of the Buffalo Bills in AJ Epineza. And I'm probably butchering the name, but that's the starting defensive end right there. And Braxton Jones shuts it down. I mean, look at this. Straight up gets the hands to the inside and just straight up anchors down. Now, he does get the influence and the help by the running back. You're going to see... The running back's going to end up chipping over here. Uh, and actually, both tackles end up getting help. Darnell Wright's also going to get help on the other side by the other player in the backfield. But again, you see both tackles end up just shutting their guys down, right? They don't lose in the snap. They do a really, really good job. On the inside, Tevin Jenkins, Matt Pryor, Coleman Shelton as well. All three of those guys are going to end up doing a pretty good job. They're going to be able to handle the uh, defensive line game that was coming. They basically shut it down. It's a pretty good job. Let's get into the next snap. So you're going to get the 42-yard screen pass here. Great job by the quarterback to be able to get the ball out without, you know, kind of looking on this one. But an even better job by the center. This play does not work without Coleman Shelton and the block that he's going to end up laying on the on the linebacker here. So keep an eye on the center. Center is going to release the, the, the defensive tackle there. And look at him turn towards the linebacker, and he ends up picking the linebacker off. So it's a great job by him to be able to get there. And just like that, you're going to pick up 42 yards. Let's go ahead and get to the next snap. All right, you guys, check this next play out. You're going to get a wide zone toss towards the left here. Watch the offensive lineman on this one. This was such a beautiful job by the guys up front. Uh, you're going to pick up seven yards on this one. Watch the tackle here. Watch Darnell Wright. Darnell Wright's going to have number 94. Because this is a toss play, essentially, you want to try to get in front of him. You want to try to flip the hips. You want to try to give your, your running back the lane. And, I mean, it doesn't get better than that. That's probably the best way you can block this play. I mean, it literally does not get better. And to me, this is just a great job by Darnell Wright to be able to get out of his stance. Great job to be able to get out there and flip the hips. And once that happens, the play is going to work. Uh, if the center here is able to climb up to the inside linebacker there, this is a touchdown. But the center is not able to get there. And it's not a terrible job. You know, number 43 is a good football player. He's able to kind of get over the top. But, uh, just a really, really good job by Darnell Wright. Braxton Jones on this one has a reach block on number 42. He's also going to do a pretty good job being able to get in front of 42. Again, these are these are guys that are going to be expected to play this year. 
43 is the starting linebacker, Terrell Bernard, and then 42 is a rotational guy, but he's really like that third linebacker, Dorian Williams. So these are starters, and you see the Bears do a really, really good job up front, just being able to handle all of what's kind of coming. Uh, I think the Bears are going to have a top five offensive line this year. I've been saying it for a couple of years. The pieces are there. You're starting to see some of these guys flash. You're starting to see these guys kind of put it together. I think they're going to be a top five offensive line this year. And I know it's preseason. I know it's early. And keep in mind, that's just a prediction, right? I could be totally wrong with that. But even over the past two years, you know, they've always had pieces. And they've added guys that are phenomenal, right? You've had Tevin Jenkins. You went out and got Nate Davis. You drafted Braxton Jones and Darnell Wright, and it hasn't all worked out, right? Nate Davis hasn't really worked out. But then you went out and got some other guys to essentially replace him, right? So I think Ryan Pulse has done a phenomenal job. Uh, on this play here, you're only going to pick up two yards. It looks like it's some sort of duo concept towards the inside. And uh, it just doesn't work well because of the the tight end here is not going to do a good job sealing out number 57. I think that's Gerald Everett right there. So, yeah, you got to do a little bit of a better job sealing that outwards. Uh, you also don't have a push on the inside. You got the double team on 90, but 90 is going to end up standing up the right guard, Matt Pryor, on this one. You know, uh, or I'm sorry, he stands up the center on this one. So, Coleman Shelton do a little bit of a je better job pushing. Uh, I know Ryan Bates and Shelton are kind of in the competition of who's going to end up starting. But I think the Chicago Bears offensive line is in a really, really good spot. You know, again, I'm not sure who's going to end up starting at right guard or at center. You know, Nate Davis, I'm not 100% sure what's going to happen with him. He was such a great football player for the Tennessee Titans. He had all the potential to become an absolute superstar. And he just hasn't been healthy. He has had some issues that he's kind of dealt with. And it's unfortunate because Davis is legit. And I think this Bears offensive line would be so much better if he was 100% healthy. Um but great job on this one by Tevin Jenkins. He's going to do a phenomenal job picking up the guy blitzing and absolutely crushes him. The play is not going to work because of the guy on the backside ends up being able to come downhill and make the tackle. The running back is also trying to cut it towards the right. Keep in mind, this is some sort of inside zone. And the backside guy will always be unblocked on an inside zone. On top of that, you can pretty much see every single gap is essentially contained. The run fits here. Bills essentially have the numbers. They're going to stack the box, and because of that, the play's not going to end up working. Not a huge deal. The Bears do settle for a field goal. This was third and one. And then you got this next drive here. We're going to go ahead and, and really get into this one. I'm going to go ahead and skip forward two snaps and get into this third and six. I want you guys to keep an eye on Braxton Jones. He's going to have a wide nine uh, starting defensive end of the Buffalo Bills, and he just shuts it down, man. He just anchors down against this guy. I mean, the way Braxton Jones moves, to me, he looks a lot better. I have seen some of Bears fans criticize him a little bit uh, this after this game here on Twitter, which is surprising to me. I felt like he moved a lot better. His hands were a lot cleaner. His footwork was a lot better. He looked stronger and more physical. Um, to me, that's a good job right there. On the other side, not as good of a job. You see the defensive line game isn't 100% passed off properly. Uh, Darnell Wright has to do a better job on this one to keep the head up. Uh, you can see the right guard is trying to fully pass off number 90. He's trying to push number 90 into right. Right's not able to see that and get in front of it. And essentially, the guard has to let go of number 90 to come back to the inside and pick this guy up. So right has to do a little bit of a better job to be able to see that. Uh, third and six, incompletion, but it is in legal contact. So the drive is going to continue. Keep an eye on the right guard on this one. You're going to get a play action bootleg to the left. Right guard, man, putting people down. One of the things I feel like I've, I'm, I'm getting the sense of with this offensive line is they are being physical at the point of attack. They are trying to crush people at the point of attack. And I love that. man. I love that mindset by this offensive line to go out there and, and, and try to hurt people. So after that 15-yard pass by Williams to DJ Moore, you're going to get a 14-yard run towards the right. I mean, a beautiful, beautiful pin and pull concept on this one. And uh, you'll see the running back picks up 14 yards. I want to I wanna just give some, some credit here to some of the guys up front. First and foremost, keep an eye here on Tevin Jenkins. He has a reach block on the three technique. And instead of trying to get in front of him, he's going to end up just snatching him downwards. So, so that's a great job right there to be able to snatch him downwards and essentially create the cutback lane by basically just putting this guy into the ground. That's a really, really, really good job if you guys ask me. Uh, on top of that, if you guys keep an eye here on the right tackle Darnell Wright, 
He has a very, very difficult block. He has to cut off number 42. That's the starting linebacker of the Buffalo Bills. The guy's not going to allow you to cut him off. So as Darnell Wright tries to cut him off, 42 is going to see that. He's going to start running backside. Darnell Wright's going to slingshot him. Now, it's not a huge slingshot. You don't really see it happening. Uh, but he does do it. And it does throw 42 off his, his uh, gap, essentially. Uh, to me, this is just a smart football play, right? This is why Darnell Wright was the number one tackle coming out last year, in my opinion. Because of plays like this. This is smart football. You know you're not going to be able to get in front of this guy. So you're going to just throw the angle that this guy's trying to take. And you're going to essentially push him towards the inside. And you can see Darnell Wright ends up to the right side of that linebacker. The linebacker ends up to the left side of Darnell Wright. And you can see how that small little tap essentially throws him off, off his, his angle that he has. So it's not a crazy slingshot, but he does throw him off. Now you're going to see Braxton Jones here do a great job getting out as well. Uh, he's not going to really block anyone, but he's going to get out there and make sure the running back does not get touched, right? His guy kind of gets out of there. He makes sure that guy's not able to grab onto the running back. He probably wouldn't have anyways. Just a really good good design. It's a really good run as well. Um, you're going to see number 85 here, the starting tight end in Komet. He's going to do a great job holding the block. See him make the contact with 57. And he does a great job allowing 57 to go underneath it. That's exactly what you want to do on these pin pulls. You want to make guys go underneath so the running back can get over the top. So it's a great job once again. Let's get into the next snap. You're going to get a play action bootleg to the left. 26-yard pass to Cole Komet. Beautiful job here by, by Caleb Williams. You know, I don't, I, don't, I don't study quarterbacks. I can't tell you guys everything that the quarterback should or should not have done. But I've watched enough tape to tell you guys that. This right here is beautiful, man. That Just that fake right here. Look at this fake. That fake is going to make number 94 put his hands up. And it makes number 94 slow down just a little bit. And Williams is going to outrun him and throw it on the run to Cole Komet. That's a beautiful, beautiful pass right there. You got another one here. First and 10. Offensive line is going to do a great job keeping the quarterback clean. Quarterbacks can get the ball out. Not a completion. But the offensive line, once again, is going to do a good job keeping the quarterback clean. Now, one of the things to know on these plays is you do have two tight ends in and a running back in. And all of that is going to influence the pass rush. Essentially, that's going to slow down which ways guys can and cannot go. Uh, so just kind of keep that in mind as we watch this tape. But a great job nonetheless. The right guard here, really, really good job. Got to give a lot of credit to Matt Pryor. The guy was phenomenal in this first game the guy did everything you want and honestly at this point the bears could just you know nate davis isn't healthy if he's not able to play matt Pryor is a great player to kind of keep in there the guy's a really really good football player and you already kind of see that as well so good job on that one let's get into the next snap here's another great play by the offensive lineman third and nine quarterbacks and then picking off running for 13 yards but again just a beautiful job by the guys up front to me, you got to give credit to to these guys up front. We'll go ahead and start right here with Braxton Jones. Watch him shut down number 57, gets the hands to 57, and then he drops the anchor right there. That's a really, really good rep to me by Braxton Jones. You know, Braxton Jones has had his struggles. Year one, he looked phenomenal. Year two, he didn't look great. He didn't look as comfortable. I know he dealt with an injury as well. But year three, he's starting off well. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on Braxton Jones. Uh, you know, I watched every single snap of the Bears offensive line last year. I plan to do that again this year. So make sure you guys are subscribed. We're going to be covering the Bears pretty much weekly, and we'll be checking in on some of the defensive guys as well. Austin Booker obviously looks phenomenal. Uh, keep an eye on Darnell Wright here. W watch him once again put those hands up and kind of fake that he's about to punch 56. And you can see that throws 56's timing off a little bit. So it's a good job by Darnell Wright. Uh, he does end up giving the corner to 56. 56 and kind of rip. That's okay. You know, you can push these guys up field. Now, this is what you actually want to do when guys are speed rushing. You want to just push them up the field. And that could naturally allow the quarterback to also get out of the pocket, right? Just kind of go underneath that. But on this one here, you know, 93 kind of takes the wide angle. So the quarterback's going to step up, which is exactly how this is taught. At the same time, if you guys keep an eye on the right guard, the right guard's going to once again do a really, really good job. So you're going to get a defensive line game. Keep an eye on number 90. Watch what number 90 does and keep an eye on how Pryor is going to handle that. Great job being able to push him off. Gets back to 93, picks him up. I mean, it doesn't get better than that, right? That's just arguably the, the, the best way you can essentially handle that. 
It's a really, really good job by the guys up front. And you're going to get 13 yards on third and nine. Let's get into the next snap. We got three plays left. Keep an eye on Tevin Jenkins. Watch how he gets in front of number 93, the three technique. And look at that. It, it it literally does not get better than that. You know what's crazy about Tevin Jenkins doing this is people think this is normal. People literally will think that that block right there is normal. That is not normal. You have to be an all-pro caliber player to be able to get in front of a three technique like this and flip your hips. Because people don't realize this. When number 93 is lined up to the right side of Tevin Jenkins, or he shaded into that three technique, that means his gap is essentially the B gap here. He has to stay within that when it comes to his run fit. But the fact that Tevin Jenkins is able to essentially flip that against number 93, this now means number 93 did not do, do his job essentially, right? He lost this rep. And that's an absolutely incredible block right there. The play doesn't work. It only picks up about a yard. Uh, it is a hard play for some of these guys. You know, uh, the center here has to get to the right side of 42. 42 is already shaded that way. Same thing with 54. He's already shaded to the right. Darnell Wright's going to have a hard time getting to the right side of 54 as well. That's a hard block for the tack one center. You can see both guys end up not essentially getting in front of these two guys. Keep in mind, those are starting linebackers. Starting linebackers is a little bit harder to reach on than, than backup guys. Play only picks up about two yards. And you got two plays left. And you're going to get the second and nine play, play action. Quarterback's going to try to hit DJ Moore. And uh, he isn't able to bring the pass in. But I do like what a lot of what Shane Waldron kind of showed on the offensive side. There's a lot of bootlegs. There's a lot of wide zone. They ran some duo early on as well. Uh, there's so much that Waldron has in his playbook. And Waldron's a really good coach. I think people are sleeping on Shane Waldron a little bit. He did a great job last year with Geno Smith. And I think so far, based off the 20 snaps that these guys did play, I felt like he did a really good job with this play calling. Uh, and this play was the play that really stood out to me right here. This was the final play, 39. Look at the offensive lineman, man. Look at the time that the quarterback has. I mean, this is, I mean, this is incredible. It, you know, you don't get this type of time unless you have a good offensive line. And I, I truly think the Chicago Bears have a great offensive line. So keep an eye on Darnell right here going up against the defensive end on this one. Great job just being able to pass it off. The guard keeps his head up. You got a veteran guard there, right? He's going to be able to see those things. So that's a really, really good job between those guys. To be able to pick it up, pass it off, and then essentially shut both of those guys down. And then on the other side, center to left tackle, you're going to basically get a three on two. I'm pretty sure these guys try to run this game as well. And uh, essentially it doesn't work. So it's a good job by those guys as well. Quarterback ends up it's kind of throwing it away. Overall, I felt like the offensive line had a really, really good day. I think Braxton Jones and Darnell Wright both looked the part. And we'll see what ends up happening as we kind of continue over the course of this season. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time with another video.